Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Woo, Messi, this is professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Wookie Man. Tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss Booking the Territory. Oh, yeah. This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast, where today we're talking Saturday night on TBS from February the 27th, 1988. We got about a month before the next big clash of champions, the first clash of champions, I should say that, so we're building towards that, and we promise it will be a whole lot better than that bunkhouse stampede that we did in January, but with that being said, I'm sitting here with Doc and Hardbody Hopper. We're just shooting the bull. We just cut a very short patron episode where I guess it was a broad logic episode where I was complaining. Other than that, Doc, you're back. How are you doing, man? Well, I'd like to go ahead and just say uh, thanks to Lance for filling in pinch hitter. He's he's one. Of, you know what I figured out about Lance? Lance is one of those guys in baseball. He can hit 300 if you give him like 250 at bats, but if you get him in there for 600 at bats, he's going to struggle. He's probably going to hit 240. Um, he's going to bore you with too much SMU football from the eighties and Vaughn Eric trivia <laughs> and all that. But he, he's a nice little change of pace. I was doing some big business deals last week. I had to travel out of town. I think was that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I can't remember it. Can't but get it was kind of, it's, it's kind of a blur, but I just want to thank Lance for stepping in. Um, hey, that's what it means to be part of the team here at BTT. It's you know, it's that little extra that makes us extraordinary, right? Right. The iron, the irony of everything you just said was Harper was real friendly with Lance. They were all cool last week on the show because he buried he buried him on the Smoky Mountain. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to make the little fella feel good about himself. You know, <laughs> I can't do that. He <laughs> Doc, he said. <laughs> I'm trying to make the little fella, like Robert Fuller told Bob Cottle, little fella, stay out of my face and hold the microphone up high, because Stud going to tell you. The problem with that is is that Lance is older, like 10 years older than Harper, but Harper's talking down to him. <laughs> Harper uh. cut a promo on him during the freaking last Smoky Mountain show that aired recently. <laughs> that was some bullshit. It, whatever, bro. <laughs> you, were, yeah, whatever, you were being bro. mean to him, man. Me and Doc wow. listened to it. You were like, you started mocking him. You were going, yeah, my name's Lance, and um, uh, I got uh, all the programs from the sportatoriums, and um, the Freebirds yeah. farted on one of them and farted on it, and it's got the smell from the Freebirds' ass on one of the programs, and um, I collect all that stuff. And then you get on the show with him last week, and you're his best friend. Hey, yeah. Lance, how are you, guy? I, I, I go Mustangs, and uh, I like to say I love my wife and my children a lot, and uh, I sound like Flanders from The Simpsons, but yeah, <laughs> uh, go Mustangs, and you know, uh, if it wasn't for the death penalty, you know, uh, SMU might be as big as UT right now, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Doc, you got anything? <laughs> no, nah, I'm going to let him hang out out there by himself. Lance <laughs> did me a solid last week picking up the show, so uh, he's he really all right did. by my book. He, he did, man, because I, I contacted him in the morning. The man went four days without electricity, and he was ready to do the show. And and this is Hopper. What? This is how Hopper treats him. We, we had a bad storm come through that, that Sunday what? night before. Yeah, whatever. He didn't pay his light bill. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is, this is all right. <laughs> come on, Hopper. I don't know. I'm sorry, Lance. You're <laughs> you're a great fella. Harper, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. You Harper, ready for the I... NBA draft tomorrow night? You can get yeah. Zion on the squad. Get Zion, and hopefully they'll trade off the fourth pick and 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 the ball kid, and you know, fuck, see what happens. 
There you go. You got LeVar Ball in town. He's the biggest heel in, in sports. Yeah, fuck the guy. That guy's a fucking... Uh. Taylor made heel. He just doesn't ESPN know it. fucking told him he did something. Uh, God, what'd they tell him? Oh, uh, we've already... D- Mike and I have already chopped it up on this at work today. Yeah. He made some inappropriate comments to the sweet, clean wife of Jalen Rose, Molly Karam. That's yeah, cute. Hot, e- huh? Oh, that's Q E R I M. If you don't know who we're talking about, there, Molly, which I've never seen a, a Middle Eastern girl named Molly, but I ain't gonna get too hung but up on that. She's Italian and a Lebanese. Well, wow. Le- Lebanon is in the Middle East, so I'm gonna stay with what I had there. Um, not too many Mollys or Jennifers or Julies hanging out in the Middle East, but hey, yeah. man, J- hey, Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose out kicked his coverage on that shit. I mean, you don't see like any like uh, Rachel's going. Hey, 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 hey! All right, Mike. Hey. Praise be to Allah. Jesus Christ! Off That's fucked show. up, man. We're off to. <laughs> Is that fucked up? We're off to a hot start tonight, Mike. Don't you think? <laughs> Maybe you should tell all these people how they can become patrons or some shit. Classy, yeah. glassy, or yeah, or you know, respectfully, Ray, or, yeah. or unconvinced Ray. Unconvinced Ray liked it, man. He wanted Dave. Is that Dave DeVries? He wanted us. To, he wanted Harper to go harder on Lance. He did. Whoa! <laughs> he, he Dave. Dave was making fun of Lance on. <laughs> on Twitter, it was kind of funny, man. I'm not gonna say anything else, but uh, unconvinced Ray, brother Dave, uh, who we saved and um, we brought him back to life. Shout out to unconvinced Ray out there, brother Dave. Yeah, he 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 was messing with Lance the other day on uh, Twitter. But yes, uh, to become a patron, it's tinyurlcom BTT. Shout out to the largest patron contributors we have: disrespectfully classy Marky Blassie, Kyle Riley, Mike Childry. Uh, your Pro Wrestling Tees gift card should be in your email inbox as of two weeks ago. So you should have those and you can go get your tees from this month. Also, a couple other shout outs. Rocky Suazo, longtime listener, signed up on Patreon. And I'd like to welcome him to the BTT Hall of Fame wing. Christopher Champer, thanks for signing up on Patreon as well. Welcome to the BTT Hall of Fame wing. Dustin, a.k.a. TwitDust on Twitter, longtime patron member on Podbean. Made the move to Patreon. He's one of our longest tenured patrons as far back as early 2017. So thank you, Dustin, for making that move. Daniel Cardenas. That's not really that. That's not really that long ago, man. That's only like halfway back. We've been doing this for four years. No, but I didn't. We didn't start doing patron stuff until first part of 2017. Until I thought of it in 2017. Okay, fair enough. You thought of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Subscription model, pal. Okay, Daniel Cardenas. I see, I see all these podcasts doing these review shows through promotions, and who started that? Daniel Cardenas, longtime listener and member of the Facebook group. Thank you for signing up on Patreon. Dave Chin, shout out to you, and thanks for signing up on Patreon too. And we had another Dave sign up, no last name for him. Uh, Dave signed up on Patreon. So thank you, Dave, as well, for becoming a Patreon member. And again, if you're not a patron, it's tinyurl.com slash Patreon, BTT, world-class shows, video reviews of all these episodes that we do uh, twice a week. Lots of stuff, pre-shows that we do, just the Clash of Champions, the JCP pay-per-views are all up there as well. So check it out. Become a patron. It's tinyurl.com slash Patreon, BTT. And with that said, we're getting a late start, so do y'all want to get into this thing? Yeah. Let's get into the show. I got a couple of things that I need to get with you on during the show, but we can go ahead because we got guys in the ring in the cage. Okay, so very good. We do have guys in the ring in the cage. It's February 27th of Saturday night on TBS, 1988. Um, The show does kick off, and I was kind of disappointed because they show the clips from the cage in the Omni with, like, Dusty and Ole and Flair, etc. They're all in there, and they're, 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 you know, Dusty's in there cleaning house. And I thought because they showed us the clip, we would see what happens later in the show. But unless I miss something taking notes... We never revisit this. Um, is that right, Doc? Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it's just further in the fact that there's tension. But yeah, you don't get a lot of uh, you don't get a lot of resolution there. Yeah, they don't do anything. Harper, did you have anything from it? Yeah, no, they don't. I want to see what the outcome was. And Harper's yeah. off to getting a Harper's off to getting a BJ early in this episode. I'm hearing That's a lot of nice. wind in that uh, wind in that microphone, Doc. You hearing? How about, how about now? Jesus. Okay. No, I, no, it sounds great. 
You just blew my eardrum <laughs> out. Jesus, Lord. Doc, every time I see Jim Ross stare at him. God, Pine, he's like, man, I took these two motherfuckers yeah. and their whole family. But that he's got his hand shit. in his pocket and just kind of yep. like, hey, what's up, man? Yep. You assholes, as soon as I can get a knife in y'all's back, I'm going to sassafras both of you because I just sold y'all the Mid-South and there was nothing to sell. And y'all buried the talent, and I'm the only one that came out of that shit looking good. Me and Sting. Have, have y'all Stinger. ever seen, have either one of y'all ever seen the, like, David Crockett did a shoot interview on on that yeah. part of where, no. where, and what Crockett said about them and buying not the only, South not only did they make a bad deal, but they doubled up on it because they bought all that debt. Well, basically, David Crockett said, he was like, Jim Ross sold us, I don't know his exact words, but it was like, Jim Ross sold us a bag of a bag of nothing, <laughs> and that was it. He was a great salesman, and left it at that. It's crazy. He also said they did, he also took some, some blame and said they did do their due diligence here, so. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he, he, he took the blame, I, I will say that. He didn't, he didn't put it solely on that. Well, in, in the same opening, they're talking about animals going to be here for the for the first time in a while since his injury, since his eye injury, the sheep herd has come out to cut a promo. And the only thing I had from this besides playing it was the sheep herders still look like the sheep herders that I remember. I mean, look at the head on, on, on yeah. Rick and Butch right there. I mean, all scarred up, but Johnny Ace just looks like a surfer dude, New Zealander. I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, doc, you got anything from that? When does it become Jack victory? Soon. I don't, re I don't remember. I mean, eventually he's going to be out there with the damn skateboard and whatnot with Douglas, but I don't, I don't, I don't have the time oh. to memory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's well, his role? You know, he's we're, not a manager. He's a flag bearer. Well, his role is going to be defined later in the show when he lays one in at Tim Horner. Yeah, when he damn near crushes Horner's trachea. Yeah. Man called Sting. There he is. Man called Sting. Sting. So, hey, what time stamp? Where are we at on the time stamp there? 310. Why? What's wrong? Okay, at 330. I need to know if that was if you made a trip from New Orleans to um Atlanta one time to watch wrestling. Let's see. <laughs> this mic is this you? Kind of looks like a young version of you here in a second. So I just wanted to see at 330. Um, if that's going to be you, right. hold on. Okay. Well, well, we just went Get past three thirty, and yeah. there's. Well, I'm it's guessing thing. here. There, uh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, is that you? You're that's an your asshole. Stepdad. <laughs> that's your. That's the mustache. Jesus Christ! Look at. I didn't miss that mustache because I was looking at the little brother that looks like you. Wow, you, that's you, nice. That okay? You're making fun of the little dude, but that which is wrong. That's a kid. But that that I, I thought fan, I was making fun of you. That fan with that 1980s sweater and that mustache, he can comb that mustache. It, it, it doesn't even look real. <laughs> <laughs> look at that stash. Look at that fine sister uh, back there. I see her. I, yeah, I ain't What's listening. Up, uh -oh. You see her again <laughs> during, the, I think it's the flare promo. Oh, the yeah? Camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she all right, boy. All right, Sting defeats... John Savage, um, pretty damn quickly. Uh, not too quick, but quick enough. And then Sting cuts a promo, and he's out there screaming and yelling. And Doc, I bet you want to hear it, right? I could really care a little less. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to piss him oh, off. Oh, that little girl scared. She she's like, Doc, she's like, I don't want to hear this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to hear a scream. I got to hear a scream. Sting, the world heavyweight champion, Ric Flair. You've had, you've had a taste. You've had a taste of what it's like. I have had a taste, but first, can you, do you hear that out there? A lot of people speaking my language. A little bit of, ow, going on out there. <laughs> speaking about language. You're talking about Flair the first time we met. He kind of walked around me, tested me a little bit, looked at me and gave me a, ooh. I don't know how he does it, but you know the way the nature boy is. I had to speak to him in my own lingo, too, and give him a little, ow. <laughs> One of those, and then maybe beat on my chest, you know, and he looked at me like I was something from outer space. I am from Venice Beach, but I'm not Looney Tunes or anything, but I know he was really starting to sweat. And when he really started to sweat, so I had the scorpion hooked on him. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I had it on him, and I should be not just that far away, 
Not that far away, but not far away at all. I should be the champion. I had him beat. I had the nature boy beat. Scorpion holding off. Nobody was gonna stop me. Referees were out of commission. If they weren't out of commission, oh, I would have been the champion. That's right. He's still every, coming to me. Yeah, right, but every time, every time his. Okay, that's enough. Doc, your thoughts. I really don't have any. There's people that think that's what constitutes great wrestling. Hopper? I, I, every kid wanted to be that. Right. Kids are kids are dumb, Harper. Every kid wanted to be that, bro. It's isn't that I could just the face paint, the fucking hair, the muscles, the bullshit. Every kid wanted to be that. I told y'all that he was for the kids. He wasn't for the adults. Mm-hmm. It was that whole kids culture. can't buy t- kid kids don't buy tickets. And in nope. the south, the kids were well, to they be, can beg the, for. It. Yeah, but in the south, you got to remember in the south, these kids were still told to shut up until they were spoken to. At this time, it ain't like I, today where the kids are running shit. They they were still aggravating their parents for tickets to the wrestling. That's that might be true, about. but how many times did you get drugged to the to the arena, Mike? You ain't got to rub it in. Neither did I. Back then, parents were okay with telling kids no. You'll get over it. It's I like just that a little disapp- It's just like, a little disappointment. Right. I like that one time you got drugged to the sport of, or you drug your parents to the sportatorium, and it was 150 degrees in there. Jesus Christ! It was the surface of the fucking sun in there. I was like, I was like 11 years old, and even I was like, man, this is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking hot, Fuck this that. motherfucker. That should be fucking illegal. But you and know, you know, and like you know. That, bro? And you know kids don't pay attention to that shit like adults do, Mike. I mean, kids are pretty resilient on that front. And it was like, dude, it's fucking hot in this motherfucker. What you what you about to say, Harper? What, you were saying something about the, a building. The fucking 2300 arena is like that. The former ECW it's arena. It's still like that? Bruh. I remember sitting like in a locker room. And I was like, this is what Cornette was talking about. The fuck? I, I can't breathe in this he's... motherfucker. I Not in the locker had... room, bro. Okay. Dude, so locker... okay. it was hot. I was like, fuck this, man. Ugh. I I didn't been in buildings that don't have AC wrestling and Ugh. Jesus, the walls start sweating. Like it yes. didn't even starts raining in a place like that from the condensation. Uh, it's got its own <laughs> damn ecosystem. It does, bro. It's right. That's what I do. We did a show <laughs> in fucking Cali in the fucking desert. It was just like breaking bad. We're in a fucking desert and there's this like fucking rec center and <clears throat> and like in the back where fucking we were, there was no fucking air conditioning and it was hot as fuck. How and then as soon as the live? fucking sun fucking uh, went down, it got cool. It was fucking crazy. Well, that's what happens in the desert. So the, the cruel yeah. connection, in case you're wondering, is Gary Royal and George South. Okay. So I knew one of them was George South. I wasn't sure if the other was Gary Royal. Um, Boy, Shane Douglas must have already shut, uh, shot his mouth off and got in trouble because he's saddled with the Latino heartthrob. I mean, when's the last time we saw Jimmy Valiant or Laser Tron? That's true, huh? What I don't know, belt? but I posted the segment when Pez turned on Boogie from 86 on the YouTube channel a little while ago. I and saw man, some listener that was going to put the, the gif of the job tones as his avatar. I like that. That's just he, fucking awesome. That is an awesome gif. That's the best GIF. one. It so like if I go, so if I click on the gifs, or whatever the fuck it's called, and I put in jive tones, that's gonna pop up. No, it won't. I had to um I had to make it. it. Someone should uh, um, I did what? Clipped it. Yeah, yeah. And then I went on like online and um uh Mike Sempervivi showed me how to make one. Uh, from the wrestling okay. observer. He he uh because I was like I didn't know how to make them. I, I just I knew how to clip videos, but I didn't know how to make them damn gifts and I, I went online and did i was like oh shit that's how you do it but that th- you're right hopper that is the best gift ever um mm-hmm. I, I gotta make the one with boogie turning on um or pez turning on boogie though and then put like some kind of uh funny because i want that like whatever something happens on the news like uh 
a fucking <laughs> something like with the. I want to fucking post what? that. What? Like just to get people fucking riled up. See, and then it's... I disappear. Talk about a natural <laughs> heel. Dude. He t- I t- we talked about that. We talked about that on the last Smoky Mountain show that just aired on uh, a week and a half ago on Sunday. Hopper purposely trolls people on Facebook. He throws his brick and runs. And with that said, yes. Shane Douglas defeated Ricky Santana. I'm sorry. Shane Douglas and Ricky Santana defeated the Cruel Connection. Hey, so by the by the time people have heard this, you're going to be up in his face down at X-Rated, aren't you? You X-rated. will have already, you'll be already up in his grill, just squared off, menace style. Uh, I sure am. I told uh, just so you I, know, just so you know, he's twenty three years old right there. I oh, the Fantastics! The Fantastics oh, are can, coming. Can we see them? Uh, not, not yet. Can, they, they'll be here in about a month. What does that mean? They should talk yeah. about it. They really screwed that up. Yeah, man, yeah. Like, what is that? A TV show? Yeah. <laughs> can, can you tell us what that means? Right. Shit. I mean, for, you know, it's better than nothing. That's why well, you gotta and, look at it. At least you got that. And what Doc's talking about is all they show is like a fantastic, fantastics like, like quick. It's not mm-hmm. even a clip of the fantastics. It's just clip art uh, or word art, like from PowerPoint or something, Jesus or a neon sign saying the fantastics, and they don't really say anything else. But they're gonna talk more about it uh, as we go on. Uh, so real quick, the after the fantastics plug, the road warrior. We got the Road Warrior Animal in here. And Animal, he's got no face paint on, but he has a large sunglasses on. And he's describing this orbital injury to his eye and his surgery that he had uh, after the bench press competition. It's very mellow. I don't have anything from it. Hopper, did you? No. I could think. Well, first thing that popped into my mind was, see, I look like Jesse Ventura. Oh. He does. He looks like a young Jesse with them glasses and do-rag on. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Doc, what about you? You got anything? At the risk of making him angry at me, the one living road warrior, I thought this was pretty bad, but I don't think this is... He's not... I don't... They're not sympathetic characters, and they don't do it well. So, it's just... This is a hard... They're asking him to do something. It's like asking a center to play point guard. It's, It's... Yeah... You're probably better than the average guy doing it, but it doesn't make it the right thing to do. That might be the smartest thing you've ever said on this show in four years. Yeah. They are not well, thank sympathetic. You. No, they are, they're not. They're not sympathetic at all. At all. All right. So, I, yeah, I don't have anything from it. I don't think he was terrible, but they're just, like you said, they're not sympathetic. So we go straight from Animal to the Sheep Herders versus the Lightning Bruh. Express. Go ahead. And these sheep herders are not are no joke. I'm telling you. Well, what do you have from it? Because they go a long time here. Okay, so here's what I have from the whole thing. We ridicule Horner, but this was a big TV match for '88, and I'll be damned if this wasn't a hellified good match all the way through. This well, was excellent. You got some really good heels with the sheep herders. Yep. And then you got two really good workers in Brad yes. and Tim. That's so right. It had the makings of what would be a really, really good match, and it was. Um, and, and you got to remember, this, this, even this level of match was still usually still seen at the arenas. Doc, are you plugged in Ethernet-wise? Yeah. Okay. You broke up. That's restarted my computer, plugged in Ethernet. You know, I'm just hanging and banging. What's the problem? Am I modulated? No, you weren't modulated. It just kind of like just broke up. Um, Oh, well, I was just going to say that. I mean, it's easy to think that, like, oh, it's 88. You were starting to see these matches everywhere. I'm going to call bullshit on that. We just saw Sting and John Savage and the cruel connection. There you go. No, they were, these guys worked their tail off. And this is their first did. You know, they they did some stuff in UWF too. So um, this was well, yeah. So these guys had chemistry because they'd worked together before. And you're right; they went a long time. Well, I'm telling you, I, I clocked it twelve minutes. Which, if you think about it, for a Saturday uh, night match so to go twelve minutes, that's that's no, that's a long match for a Saturday night match. Twelve minutes? Well, I mean, and I don't. That's true because Sting just beat John Savage in about twenty nine seconds. Now, 
I also thought Tony and JR, nothing specific that they said, but they treated this like a big match and a, and a big, big uh, confrontation. And I thought they helped it out, too, by making it just seem like we were getting something that we normally don't get and making it feel like a big match. So I thought, man, everybody involved with this did a great job. And then, you know, we can talk about the end in a minute because there was something to that, too. But that was this nice. was that was a good match. Harbor, before I go to the finish, what do you have from it? How about how fucking great Brad Armstrong was. Yeah, man. He's really good, dude. Yeah, He's the, man. The goddamn candy man. <laughs> and you know what's Rack- funny? Like, it's, man, they it's, just fucked with him and dope at the end. And the Arachna man, candy man, buzz kill, BA, and he was a no limit soldier. <laughs> yeah, I remember dude. that. God, I, oh, I forgot about that. Fuck. In, in, in um, like, when I when I recorded with uh, Big Swole that time from the No Limit Soldiers, yeah. he was talking about how he's like, man, Brad was like the coolest dude on the planet. He's like, man, I love Brad. He's like, he was funny. He was just cool to hang out with. And if you go back and look at the pictures of Brad from the Soldiers, it actually looks kind of funny because he's so country, like the way he talks. <laughs> <laughs> he's a No Limit Soldier. He's out there. Man, that's some stuff you got to go back and watch because it is kind of funny when you see Brad like in the soldiers. It's just uh, it, it, in the Rap is Crap tour. Oh, man. <laughs> they, they, that was some funny stuff, man. That was, that was gold. I got to give him credit. All right. Uh, Brad would look Brad looked great here. Let's go to the finish. I'm going to play it because there's a lot going on. Here it is. Over to the other side. Ooh. Man. They both connected. Hunter falls on top. Hunter's on top for a two. Oh, almost a three, but both men. Williams is out, it appears, as Armstrong and Miller battle on the floor. Johnny Ace to the top. Still on the floor. Down to our right. Both men are battling around. Oh, right to the post. Right to the post. But Horner has got Luke Williams pinned. He's been out for like a 13 or 14 count. And now it's Miller. Back of the neck of Tim Horner. Johnny Ace has a referee detained. What's Miller doing? He's pushing the legal man out of the ring. And now he's going to mm. cover Tim Horner. He's not the legal man in the ring. And it's Brad Armstrong saying, no, sir. You can forget it. He shouldn't make the count. It's nothing but mm. pandemonium in the ring. The referee saying, continue. The match is going to continue here. Teddy Long realizes that Luke Williams was the right man in the ring. And it wasn't Miller. That's really breaking down. USA breaking down. Zealand. What a hot tag team encounter we've got here. Roll over the bridge. He's got him pinned right here. Oh, oh my oh. God. Hammering it across the throat with a flagpole. The referee's calling for the bell. Armstrong intercepts him. This one is breaking down. They're inside the ring and now they're out. It's going to be a display. So the part that was awesome there. Johnny Ace cracked Tim Horner across the throat with that flagpole. Yeah. <laughs> and he bent it. It's broken. Uh Doc, your thoughts. He broke that shit. He broke that shit on his windpipe, pal. And his ass I mean, still went and did the natural bridge up in Smoky Mountain after that. That, that natural bridge. We always said that, that shit was Oh God. Bro, Dude, he, he fucked him up. Uh, Hopper did what? What an asshole. <laughs> you, Harper, was that stiff? Watch, watch. Ah. <laughs> yeah. The only way I'm taking that is if that pole isn't really a pole. But damn, man, he cracked Horner. Nah, come vicious. on. We all know that taking poles is your specialty, so come on. Uh, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know if you Get go back it. to the. If you go back to the Squirter episode with Hopper, you know, they what? took one of the peg him, and he was very happy to apply. He didn't do it. Well, hey. We got a breaking down from JR, too. That's nice. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts, Hopper, on the finish right there before we go to the next I just, segment? I, 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 was, I was watching this thinking when I was a kid, when you saw uh, the ref was going to one, two, you're like, oh, God, okay, it's a fuck finish. But wait, wait, wait. No, it's not. He actually listened. The ref actually listened to the fucking guy and and the 
you know, it's the good guys are going to finally win this shit, but it didn't but happen. Then, yeah. Yeah. They, st- they still got screwed in the end. That's true. Yeah. That's good point. Doc, you got anything else from it? I got to tell you, I really enjoyed this whole thing. I thought it was well done and dangerous and violent and looked like there was a personal issue. And if there wasn't, there should be after getting hit in the throat. It's easy to pile on Horner and yell at him, but everybody involved with that was awesome. I mean, we give Horner a hard time, but look, let's give him some credit. Hey, we call it like it is around here, and he did okay, so there you go. Yeah, he did good. I mean, nobody asked him to say Paul Orndorff in an interview, so he's all right. Mr. Warndorf. <laughs> <laughs> he said Warndorf multiple times. Multiple times. We will go to the next segment where it is a Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup announcement and Tony oh. Schiavone. I won't is this the one it. you went to? No, I went to the I went to the first one in eighty six. This is oh. this is two years later. Tony announces that uh it's kind of confusing because he says the semifinals will be at the Greenville Memorial Auditorium in South Carolina on Friday night, and the finals will be held at the Greensboro Coliseum the next night on Saturday. So that's in North Carolina, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So um anyway, you got essentially two sites for the cup this year, not just one. We should so, go. Let's get in the truck, let's get in the car and uh and go. See what happens. So that's You know, I've been thinking about hopping in the car with you and going down to X rated. You should. They're all gonna be there. I mean, nobody yeah. would know. Yeah, no, I don't even know what the. You could walk up to me right now, but who, who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, you'd know. You'd feel my power. <laughs> <laughs> you'd feel the dockaholic juice coming off of. <laughs> hey, you're All the right. one that's modulating over there, pal. You're the one that's a a, a sound nightmare. Right now. Okay, I don't know what it is then. I mean, I'm plugged in Ethernet. If this show sounds like shit, it's your fault. Okay, blame me. My apologies. All right. Yep, uh, yep. yep. Harper, do I sound modulated to you? Uh Uh-uh. Okay, so there we go. We know who it's on. Does Doc sound modulated to you a little bit? Uh, A little bit, but not, you know, overbearing. Now where it's like, you know, what the fuck? Let's keep the show moving in. We got the Midnight Express versus Curtis Thompson and Cody Starr. Midnight win. Doc, thoughts? Uh, can we get 34-20 for a great move from Bobby Eaton? 34-20. Oh, the knee drop off the top. Oh, that was a punch, wasn't it? No, he hit him with the knee across the throat. Like, oh. why is everybody trying to break everybody's windpipes tonight? Watch him. He body slams him. He goes okay. to the top. Okay. Oh, like, yeah. When he does the old, the old honky tonk man fist drop thing. Yeah, oh, he sure did. I don't know why I was thinking knee. I can't see good. Yeah, I'll I'll accept that apology. I'm not sorry. I know. Not sorry. Right. Uh, Doc, any other thoughts? No, nah, they did that. Well, they did that move twice again, where they are holding the dude up on the t- top rope, and the other one leapfrogs onto their back. Man, that's a rough, that's a rough move. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take that one. Harper, you got yeah, any thoughts on the match? No, let's get to this promo. All right, here he Fucking goes. Stan, <laughs> Jim Cornette's out here. Uh, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night, that's right, at 5.30 tomorrow night on Sunday show, you're going to have a special announcement about a special program that's coming to TBS live, Clash of the Champions, March 27th, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I tell you what, you've got to watch it tomorrow to find out exactly what's going on there. Now, Jim Cornette <laughs> with the Midnight Express. Live, I love live, because we are live, they are live, everybody's live around the NWA, and David, I, I understand you've been critical of me lately. Well, don't criticize me 
Because I heard that you're it's going out. It's easy to be critical. Yeah, I heard you're going out with the same girl as Jimmy Swaggart is. So don't criticize me or I'll dig up a little dirt on you. Now let me just say this. The Midnight Express, besides Louisville, Kentucky, coming up besides Houston, Texas, everywhere else that the NWA goes to, brother, we're the greatest tag team that there's ever been, and everybody knows that U.S. Tag Team Champions, and we <laughs> prove it not, yeah. not by getting in the ring and beating up goofs like you just saw us beat up, but by the past three years getting in the ring with guys like the Road Warriors, Dusty Rhodes and Magnum T.A., then Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff, the Garvins, the Wyndhams, all the bogus expresses, and every one of the other two two dozen teams that have come and gone in the past three years that the Midnight Express has been here. We are the greatest and we've outlasted the best and nobody's been able to Stand. stop us and that means I'm pretty great too. Well this year's Crockett Cup is coming up and we got no other competition. <laughs> nobody on the horizon, nobody that can give these men a fight or that can take their titles. So we're gearing for the Crockett Cup. And last year we got ripped out of being the number one out of the top ten seeds. My mother was real weed off of this year. If we're not rated number one by the NWA, even though Jim Crockett doesn't want us to have a million of his dollars, even, if, even though the NWA tries everything that they can do to keep the Midnight Express down, if we're not rated number one this year, then everybody out there is going to know that something's crooked because these men are the best and we've proven it month after month and year after year. And, brother, we're going to take that million dollars and we're going to win that Crockett Cup tournament the first night in Greenville and the second night in Greensboro. And I'll say this. The Garvins, I don't care. Barry Windham, I don't care. Any other tag team, I don't care. But we might, we might just get a chance to get in the ring against the Barbarian and the Warlord or Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson, who are the only two teams in wrestling besides us that I give credit for having guts and being strong and being good and having talent. And, brother, that might really be an interesting matchup. <laughs> David. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the ring now to see a team that definitely has talent. We're talking about Barry Windham and Lex Luger. Are we going to talk about Stan here? Yeah, th that, that's a. I couldn't stop looking at him. I, I mean, yeah. Harper, uh, let let let's let's describe Stan what he's doing, please, in your Stan's best words. Like, like, you see that one right there? I'm mm. gonna fuck her tonight. Mm -hmm. Which one? That one right there. And then when he picks the up black one, the, the black one, <laughs> the black, yeah. uh, not her. Well, no, maybe no, her, on, Bobby. That one right there. <laughs> yeah. With the tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's smiling. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he, he's with pointing. the tits. <laughs> Bobby's sitting there like. All right, Jimmy, come on, get this over with. And Stan's like, I don't give a damn what this asshole's saying behind me, but you <laughs> see that broad over there, Bobby? Look at her, her right there. Look at her. <laughs> she <laughs> is going to get the that. dick later. I'm going to hit that one. I'm going to, that one, right there, Bobby, over there. Let's look see. at her, Bobby, you see it? Look, look at her, look at each other. <laughs> come here. Look, he's whispering to Bobby. <laughs> Bobby is, it po is it possible that Bobby is the only guy in wrestling that didn't cheat on his wife? Possibly. Possibly. Well, Jimmy Garvin, too, probably. You could put him in that category. Who? Jimmy Garvin. Jimmy Garvin. Why? I don't think he did. Not if you hit his stories. He he was. Just do threesomes count? Wow. That's nice. Right. Stan is like that one right there. And Bobby's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And then, and then when he picks up the ink pen, what do you th and he's like, man, look at this. What ink do you think? pen? Yeah, watch. He fucking picks up an ink pen later on, and he looks at it, he and knows. he shows it to Bobby. And I'm thinking, but... What do you think that pin says? WCW on it? And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he shows it to Bobby. What the fuck's that? WCW. I, I really think they were just waiting for Corny to shut up. And yeah. they were just entertaining themselves. I think, I, mean, Dan Lane is, I think Dan is upset that he's up in the morning and it's probably too early to be banging ass. Look, look at him. He's looking at the right. pin right there, Hopper. <laughs> World Championship Wrestling. Look at this. Look at this. Bobby? Let's look. Bobby, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim Crockett promotion. 
Yeah. This is the kind of shit that's preventing us from getting our full checks. Man, fuck this. <laughs> they were just out there entertaining themselves, man. That's all I could say. Doc, what do you yeah. have besides, besides anything that it, did Harper it's a anything? moment that you, it, it's a moment that you will never, ever, ever see on Monday or Tuesday nights because that isn't scripted. It's just entertaining. Yeah. Off the cuff. Let me ask y'all a question. What did Cornette Mel, say? I ho- hold on. Look how, look how dry Lex Luger is here. I can't get that out of my head ever since Harper pointed out that Luger sweats through his interviews because we it got this coming again. up. But it did. The problem is not that Harper brought it up. You can't unsee the fact that. I can't that. unsee it. And when Luger cuts his promo, he talks about, about Flair sweating because he has to face him. And I popped. <laughs> It's pitiful. Hey, one last thing from Corny's promo. He told uh, Corny told uh, David Crockett he would air his dirty laundry um, as he referenced Crockett messing with one of uh, Jimmy Swagger's girlfriends. I just wanted to mention That's that. Nice. Jimmy Swagger, pal. That was yeah. back in the days when you could get all the the marks. Wrestling would try to beat the church to the money by holding wrestling on Saturday nights so that the Assembly of God assholes couldn't get to it on Monday, Sunday morning. That's nice, at, Doc. At the Texas uh, Motel on fucking Airline Highway. What? Jimmy Swagger. Oh. When he was caught with the fucking whore. Oh, yeah. Let's keep the going. Who- I don't... The, <laughs> the whore. The whore. She's a whore. The whore. Jimmy Swagger was a slimy bastard. You fuck, they all were, bro. Here we go. <laughs> let's not get into church here. <laughs> let's 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 keep it moving. I mean, they're all they're all working you. Yeah. It's just you know it's the same. Now you're of... a good Catholic white boy from Metairie, and you're gonna say that. I mean, it's like politicians. It's like it's they're all assholes. But are they are are they your asshole or are they his asshole? All uh, right, know? Barry Windham and Lex Luger defeat Gene Ligon and Rick Orasi. Hopper, any thoughts on this match? No. Doc, are you, Doc, you? No, the sweat fest is is yet to come. So I hadn't planned on playing it, but it sounds like y'all want to test the the Luger hypothesis with the sweating again. If I'm hearing y'all correctly, dude, he gets a lot sweatier, and he mentions Flair sweating during it. All right, so let's look let's at watch. him right here at the beginning of it. He don't have no sweat. I'm not even going to play the audio. We're just going to react to the... He's listening a bit. He's got, he's got a, a nice sheen. He's yeah. got a... Oh, that's a good way to put it. A little sheen going on on the chest area. Not really the arms, but the chest is... There's a little and sheen Bob, showing. And, and then Barry doesn't look like he's anything close to being in his shape, and they ain't one drop of fucking sweat on him. Yeah, Barry, only... Barry was doing 12-ounce curls. Barry's got All a little right. sweat on his forehead. Go ahead, Doc. Well, here it comes, pal. Turn on the waterworks. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get some sound, perhaps? Oh, you want sound? Luger's too. Yeah, we need to know what's happening. We, we need to know what's causing all this. Sidetrack the lawn away, but baby, believe me. Look in the berry's eyes. Look in my eyes. The fire is there. We are on track. So, Blanche and Anderson, Man. we are serving notice for the final time. We're after titles. And yours are the ones we want. And we're coming after them. And it's not a dream any longer. It's this close. We can reach out and touch it. It's going to be a reality. And nature boy, you got your hands full with a stinger right now. And I'll tell you this. I'm enjoying watching you sweat with that young man. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I'm you're recognizing you. we're going to keep that title sweat, now. Because believe me, Sting has a legitimate shot to be the next. World heavyweight champion, and me and Barry have nothing we do for the stinger. The police said he has matches. I think he's got your number. We're behind him 100%. And sooner or later, Flair, when it all washes out, you and I, whether it's Tyler or no Tyler, are going to be one on one. And all I'm talking about right now is the Omni. Tomorrow night. God, he's dripping. If you think I feel intense about it, you're right. Left hand's the Omni. I was laid out. At your hands, three on one. But this time, the odds are evened up. 
This is exciting. This is what I've been waiting for. We got you in the position we've wanted you for a very long time. The three of you, I'm talking about the horseman against Ole Anderson, a man who doesn't know when to say die, and the American dream himself, a man I've fought many times, a man who in Starcade taught me war in one match that I've learned in my whole career, a man who changed my career around. And now we are on the same side, the same side against the horseman. And we got another surprise for you, James J. Because if you stick to your nose where it doesn't belong in Atlanta, Magnum TA's there. He's giving us our He's got a big surprise for you if you try to interfere. So what we're doing is we're coming to Atlanta, and we are going to blow the roof off the place. And bear with it myself, baby. This is the tag team of all tag teams. Count on it. You can bank on it. We are what's happening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just one moment. It's it's got to be nerves because he's sweating bullets at the end. He he's, it's like he just got out of a swimming pool. I mean, look at him. He's glistening. And now and now that Harper rang that bell, you can't. No, I can't see anything else. I can't focus on him playing with his junk or whatever he's saying. It's just you're sitting there watching a man cook like a fucking. Christmas, Christmas turkey. <laughs> he's like a, he's like a ham. He's like a freaking Christmas ham being basted up in that damn oven. And it's just go baste the with... tur- go baste the ham or it'll be too dry. Where do you think like they did turkeys in moist. Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Man, let me tell you something right here. Go ahead. We're Doc. about you, you texted. We're this. about to see. We're about to see the Nature Boy Paul Lee and his debut get his ass beat the fuck down. Yeah, what the fuck was his problem? I don't know, but I'm telling you right now, Paul Lee is a better professional than I am. Because if I got slapped in the face like he slapped (laughs) Paul Lee in the face, I'm either fighting back or rolling out of the ring. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let me say something here. Ronnie Garvin beats the piss out of this bastard. He doesn't tie him up in a pretzel like he does some of the guys, but he slaps this jackass across the face like this guy it's is his Paul bitch. Lee. That don't have nothing to do with the fact that he slapped him, though. Right, but it's our Smoky Mountain friend, Paul Lee. So, and then when he pins him, he just puts his leg over his throat with all his weight. Like, fuck you, bro. <laughs> so yeah. here we go. I'm going to advance to it. Look at now. look at 49, 49.30. All right, 49.30. Let me go back a second. This is 49.25. Here it is. 49.30. Those headbutts no. look great. I don't know what I had there then. Yo, there. Bitch. Oh. He picks this bastard up by his leg and like, He forgot to get his he fucked him up so bad the guy did not kick out. And it should have been a three count right there. All right. And he then tags, here comes Paul Lee. Let me play the audio. He tags him in. Listen to this. He picked him up. Slaps him for the first time. Ronnie Garvin is dissecting Paul Lee. Slapped him for a second. He's going right through him. Ronnie Garvin, and Cornette knows Ronnie Garvin firsthand. He knows how intense he is. He knows how he can be. Rick Flair knows how he can be. You know, we're talking about great facilities around the country. We talked about the, the great buildings. But when you talk about super wrestling facilities and where you can get a bird's eye view, where you're right down amongst them, as they say down in South Texas, we can't leave out the Sam Houston Coliseum because on Friday night, March the 4th, Uh-oh. Sam Houston Coliseum, a night of champions, it's going to be like the old days in the Coliseum. The NWA returns to the Coliseum. Bitch. And- just get into the ground. Johnny Garland is going to return really this year. Return to- Okay, so I'm going to stop it here. He he just slams him on the ground. He stomps on the man's face. And now here it comes. He's about well, to slap. That wasn't even like a move. He's just like, fuck you, bro. Get on yeah. the fucking ground. Yeah, it, yes. that's all it was. Now, he stomps on his face after he does it. And now I want everybody to listen. 
as he disrespects this man by slapping him across the face like he's his hoe three different times. Here it is. Thunder. He's never forgot. Polly will never forget his debut on the Superstation. Tony, I think we can safely say. You're right. <laughs> He won't forget it for sure Here tomorrow comes, morning the first when he tries to climb out of bed. Ronnie Garvin went right for the throat and now slapping him in the face. The former heavyweight champion of the world will no doubt Dead be butt. in the Crockett Cup tournament. And there the will be lap. no other man in that tournament as physical as Ronnie Garvin. I've never seen him as aggressive as we're seeing right here. This one is, this is one that we're going to put in the book. Well, we really don't have to describe what's going on. You can see it. It's really at home. You can almost. Oh, bro, how disrespectful was that? That was, dude, he slapped the crap out of him. A come over here. Look at that shit. Right. Puts all his weight down like, fuck you, bro. I'm thinking maybe he told us something in the back prior or, or, or what, man? No, he just. Ronnie he Garvin. Just decided that, he just decided that Paul Lee needed a lesson and he was the guy to give it. Yeah, that was just Ronnie Garvin back then, man. And so and Paul Lee right there is just laying there like, when's this going to be over with? I'm not even going to fucking move. Just fucking... He slapped the piss out of him. And right. you know a slap is a, is a disrespectful move in and of itself. He He slapped him like... He was the pimp that was mad at one of his hoes. It was just straight disrespect. So I, I, I it just was. was like, all right. Um, I mean, let okay. Me... So let me ask you this: We always ask. You're out there, Mike. You're you've been in the ring. You've been through some wars. You you've been you've cut yourself. How are you going to react if a veteran hit you like that in the face with a slap? And I can't let nobody just slap me like that and not fight back. That's just. So seriously, I mean, I, I, I'm, I set you up a little bit, but I, I'm being serious. I mean, it's a work, but you're out there with the guy who's leading you through a match. And all of a sudden, dude, he's slapping you in the fucking face. But Literally. See, not... I mean, seriously. This is a weird, this is a whole nother ball game because this guy is on national television. His job is in a, as an enhancement talent is to take an ass whipping and put over the Garvin's here, which I've said this before. When so you I'm, not, the I'm not here to tell, I'm not here to tell Ron Garvin how to do his job far, far from it, but he didn't have to slap the man in the face like that twice. Does well, he? That's what I was going to say. He does it more than twice. He right. slapped him multiple times. I, I, as much as I like Ronnie Garvin, he's wrong. Cause like yeah. the thing for Paul Lee is what is he supposed to do there? Like, I'm going to tell you what I would do on an indie show, but Paul Lee can't do that right <laughs> you would, here. You would say, Menace would stand up and give, him, <laughs> and give him the finger, the Hogan finger. He <laughs> 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 starts shaking. <laughs> you I mean, know. like. So like you would if, you would menace up and, and <laughs> no way that well, doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> anybody who's ever been like like hit too hard in a match, they'll tell you like they'll they'll give they'll give you like one. It'd be like and like get a I potato, remember, like, right? Yeah, like I can remember saying, "God damn, can you lighten up?" Like you know, yeah. telling people that. I mean, I've I've and I know Harper's probably heard that shit too from uh, at ringside. Like somebody cracks somebody real hard, you'll hear the guy go, "Shit, dude, you ain't got to hit me that hard. I know how to sell." And then if they keep doing it multiple times, then it's like, "Oh no, fuck this shit. What is wrong with you? Now you're just being disrespectful." But the problem is Paul Lee can't do that right there because he's his job is to take he's the nobody. ass whooping. What's he gonna do? Yeah. Hulk up to Ronnie Garvin right there? Oh, that's gonna get over well. He might die if he does that. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, Hopper, you got anything from Garvin just totally disrespecting this poor man? No. That was rough. Yeah, it was fucking rough. <laughs> all right, let's go to Ric Flair and J.J. Dillon. Here it is. The number one man in the world, the world heavyweight champion, Ric Flair and J.J. Dillon. You know, tomorrow in the Omni is going to be a real, real interesting situation, champ, because they're heralding as the first time ever that Ole 
Lewis and The Rock himself. The total package, Lex Luger and the legend, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, have all walked the aisle together and standing there with him, the former United States champion, great himself, Magnum T.A. The question I wonder seriously as they prepare for a match against the Four Horsemen, have they really been prepared for this important match? Or have they been preoccupied with apologizing for things that have come down in the past? Has only Addison say, hey, Dream, I'm sorry for the time that I smashed your hand and you had to wear that cast for all those weeks. Luger's got to look at the Dream and he's got to apologize for how hard he laughed when he ran with the horseman. And the Dream has got to live with that thought that there was the man that did it. There was the man that ran with the horseman and laughed about it. And I'm just wondering, Chip, are they really, really prepared for what's going to unfold tomorrow when the horsemen walk that aisle, as only the horsemen can, led by the world champion? <laughs> well, first of all, before I really turn the gas on, let me point somebody out the audience over here. JJ, you see that girl in the red over there? Let me tell you, there's no woman in the world that likes to be called Fetzel. But Swetzel, that's your name. So you sit there and keep your mouth shut until Dusty Rhodes walks out here, then leave with him. And you next to him, she young lady, I want you to know you'll never be first, but you might be next. <laughs> that's nice. Now, tomorrow night, the Omni. Last week, they almost took me off WTBS for life because nobody wanted to really look at the consequences that everybody has to be aware of tomorrow night. Luger, you're right. It's our first time together in the ring. You and I, head up. Only Anderson, I know it all he's got. Dusty Rhodes, we go back. We know what we have. Now I've got Iron and Tully on my side. I've got the premier mind in our sport to my left and Magnum TA. Let me explain something to you in the real world of combative athletics. If you get in my way, Magnum, I don't care what kind of shape you're in, I'm going to knock your teeth back out the other side of your head. You understand that? And that goes for me, Iron, Tully, or JJ. So Magnum, you find a chair to sit in. You keep your mouth shut because tomorrow night, Luger, and I gotta be kind of calm here. I don't want anybody out here telling me I'm off the air. Tomorrow night, Luger, I'm gonna be on the other side of that dressing room through the cement wall, listening to the doctor pull the stitches through your body. That's a promise. You're way too pretty. You're an untouched commodity in our sport. That means you have been bled and sweat and paid the price to be out here cracking on the world champion. Now Sting, woo! Let me tell you something, pal. When you are an established commodity, when you are a man of means, when you are the man that says he owns, operates, and dictates what this does, then, pal, you can walk out here and crack on anybody you want to. But you see right now, what you are is a guy that, like Luger, has got to learn what it is to pay the price. So in the next couple of weeks, whether it be Houston, whether it be Greensboro, Louisville, Sting, you're going to be mine. Woo! Coming up next, the world six-man tag team. That was pretty damn solid. Doc, what do you have? Very solid. In the world of combative sports, he started off with sweats so over there just calling a bitch out. And I'm guessing at first, I, you know, I wasn't here last week, but I did watch the episode. I was called away at last minute notice. So I watched the episode and I, you know, that's a, I don't know what y'all said about this, but hitting yourself in the forehead till you're bleeding is a hell of a visual. But I'm pretty sure the TV execs don't care for that shit. 
Is that is that what we think he's he's trying to keep himself calm about, or was it that a couple? He was also talking about making love all over people. No, it, it, that's exactly what he was talking about. He there was some truth to that. That the execs didn't like the fact that he bled on television. That's why we're seeing most of these guys with better looking foreheads than we did two years ago when we were doing this yeah. show. And Magnum was rolling out there with the belt sander and. Ivan had head bandaged up and Tully had bandages and Rick, they all had bandages and if they didn't have bandages. Their head looked like it'd been through a meat grinder. So yes, you're correct. Okay. Uh, what else you got? Well, he's also ready for sting. I'm telling you that right now. Sting's not sting has no idea what's going to happen to him. (laughs) You just love sting doc. Don't you? I just don't get it, and I never have, and, and I just... never will. Yeah. Man, call Sting. Harper, what do you have for Rick right there? Bam, bam. You can't make fun of fat broads. I wanted the camera what? to fucking go on to see how how fat was she. Me too. I can imagine she looked Harper, like a chick Harper. from Smoky Mountain that had the Maytag shirt on. Oh, shit. <laughs> Harper, Harper, what's the biggest girl... You think you ever tagged, and how big was how big was she? He's uh, not going to admit that. Mm, weight wise, yeah. How how big have you gone? <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, not as big as me. So you're a big guy, though. Is that two fifty? What is that? Oh um, no, no, no! For, Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's like he's lying. That's like he's that's like he's lying. That's like banging a fucking uh, Brian Erlacher or something, man. The fuck? He's yeah. lying. That's an eighth of a ton. That's an eighth of a ton. Right, two hundred and fifty pounds, bro. What the? He, fuck? That's, that's a that's lot like of pounds, Mike. Come yeah, on. that's a fullback. That's a fucking Har- fullback. Harper, do you hear? Do you hear what Mike is saying about you? He's not lying. Only, right. Not only does he not believe you. But he think he thinks you're lying. But he also thinks that you would bang a broad that weighs 250 pounds. Jesus Christ! I think he would go as high as 300. I really. God. Jesus. Come Here's on, why. Dude. Here's why. That's because he drinks. Why? No, no, no. He's single, and sometimes when you're single, you kind of gotta go the route of take what you can get. Every, you know. No, 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 no. no. Fuck that. <laughs> 300 why. pounds. I could see, dude. Three man, I, that's a lot, Mike. Blind men. <laughs> that is a lot. Of, that's a lot of weight, Mike. Yes. To a football, to a football player, a Division that's One a offensive, offensive lineman at a non-power five school, like at at Tulane. <laughs> Look, Harvard, I didn't. I, Texas. That's a I lot. Didn't, yeah, I didn't expect Harper to be completely <laughs> honest here, but I think you've blown this a little bit Jeez. out of proportion. Three hundred I mean, pounds? Do I think he may have slipped one in a two twenty? Yeah, yeah, okay. Am I gonna fuck Vader? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna fuck Vader back. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> well, I think Vader weighed a little bit more than three hundred, but fair enough. Fair enough. Did, well, is it has Vader washed his gear, or do you have to go in there stinky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, right. Mike! I know you, I, Mike. I know you've hopped on somebody that was just way beyond the weight limit. Probably two fifty, somewhere around. How there. much? Yeah, two fifty. How much? Two fifty around two fifty <laughs> somewhere around. There. Well, how much you That's weigh? A lot of like, like at your highest, you think? Oh, I was, I was, I was up to three hundred at one point. No, Jesus. Jesus, really? Yeah. Wow. What do you weigh? What do you weigh now? One twenty? One thirty? No. Um, nowhere near three hundred. But yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, Damn. I guess around two fifty. I mean, I don't know. I don't walk around with a scale. Were, I'm trying to. Was it? Was it? Was that you? You, you tagged this. You got this pig at the same time. You were three hundred pounds. Yeah, I was. was, I was awesome. so there, there was five hundred. There was five hundred and fifty pounds on that bed. Just that poor bed. <laughs> Jesus, I was, I, was, bed, I was. I was big at the time. Yeah, that bed was like brace for impact. 
Now, Harper's having fun over there, but he he's 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 had his share of freaking Smoky Mountain hogs. Don't let him fool you. Uh, yeah, God, no. <laughs> here's, here's what happens, bro. Every guy has that like the, the the fucking backup plan. Like it's been a while. You got somewhere to go. You know what I'm saying? So don't get bro. It's like it's like when you go to a re- you go to a restaurant or a bar with your, your family finish, or your Doc. friends. No, no, no. Hold on. It's the same thing as you go eat at a restaurant. You go to a bar. You are the person that automatically looks and says, "Okay, there's the emergency exit in case I need to pop out of here in case yeah. something happens." Same same thing Harper's talking about. Right. You try. You trying to clean it up, Harper? Go ahead. No. The emergency plan. Let's see. Every hear. single person has. Like two or three of them that like I I, I can call right now. I feel like what you doing tomorrow? All right, well I'll come by tomorrow. I'm off of work. All right. I mean fuck everyone's got uh, two or three of them like that. How many do you have right now like that? Uh, about two or three. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if we uh, added up all their weights, would it be would they no. be bigger? Than, would they be bigger than the three we have right there in the barbarian? In the no. world? <laughs> Okay, are we done? Are we done with this segment? Where I mean, you brought it up like I'm fucking King Kong Bundy and fucking Vader or something. Going for yeah. the five Every count. Every goddamn night. Man. Uh, never okay. be. I, I've always, shit I've always that, kept my conquest down into the Dixie Dynamite kind of range. <laughs> oh, like a, a fucking Mike Jackson. You know? Yeah. I can okay. honestly say I don't think I've ever gone above two bills. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, good for you, Tinkerbell. I've never been that desperate. Yeah, good no, for huh? you, Tinkerbell. All right. Hey, speaking speaking of uh, doing things that you don't want to do, Mike, do you need to apologize to our uh, our uh, colleague in in the podcasting game, Mister Stone Cold Steve Austin, because he's back on the scene, pal. That's great. You know what else we uh, needed to cover before we get to this uh, next promo is we didn't mention, but after Flair and Dylan came out, Jimmy Garvin and Ron Garvin were out there cutting a promo, and Crockett told Garvin he looks like he gets off on watching Ronnie uh, manhandle these poor saps. He probably does. Yeah, he does. So, anyway. Uh, I beat Ron off during Gar- it a little bit. It's nice. And then uh, Doc and Harper, while we were talking about Harper banging those whales, Excuse me, I had to belch, but I didn't want to do like Doc and burp to all the people. The Powers of Pain, Warlord, Barbarian, Ivan, uh, they defeated Mike Jackson, Alan Martin, and Joe Cruz in a six-man title match. And now the Powers of Pain are out there um, looking like just two big bastards out there with Paul Jones running his mouth, but I don't have anything from it. Paul Jones is gloating about how they laid out all three of the Road Warriors, including Ellery. And Doc, you got anything from that? I guess Manny Fernandez is over in AWA these days, huh? Uh, Manny's gone. Yeah, Manny's well, I know gone. he's gone, but he I'm got trying drafted. To an extra layer to the army. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> they redid Vietnam. They did redid Vietnam Rambo Six. He was the star. Right. My dad used to always be like, "Bro, why don't they leave those people alone?" <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they made the movies. Yeah, because I used to always watch the Rambo movies. The missing in action with fucking Chuck Norris and all that. And he's like, why don't they leave? Oh, fuck, they can't fucking leave those people alone, man. Mm. That that was that time period. Yeah. They made all those movies about. Them. That shit was just, we. they ran out of Westerns to make. So they started making those yes. movies. That's, That's true, exactly huh? Exactly what happened. They right. ran out of westerns, or what they needed. What they did was they needed to create a new enemy, a new heel. So that's the brown. what they did. Different. It was gone from the red man to the brown man. Now it's exactly what they did. A new, a new villain for these people to hate for a, a modern time. <laughs> that's red exactly man to the yellow man. That's exactly <laughs> what happened with all those movies. It was just it was booking. That's all. Gang, 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 gang. That's what they all sound like. I always but, tell it, fucking Boo Boo Dow that shit. Hold I was on. Like, why do they sound like that? It, it, hold those on. Fucking Vietnam movies. That's exactly what they would do, though. It was so They sound Come like on. someone fucking with a fucking weed eater. <laughs> Come uh, on. And, and I asked, no. like, oh, Boo Boo Dow. 
I was like, why are they fucking? Is that like a stereotype, or, or is that how they really talk? Come on. And he's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> no, no. Like, Harper's got a point. I, I bought your shirt. You got me some pussy. What do you want from me? Yeah. Harper's <laughs> got a point. In those movies, they wouldn't be talking. They would. They weren't speaking their language. They were just making sounds. Right. It's true. It was like sound yeah. effects. Like it was and so that's what stereotypical. I like about the, uh, that fucking Mel Gibson. Uh, we were soldiers. With they made the Vietnamese army look like a real professional army. Like there were generals and they, they they were planning attacks and flanking them and shit like that. They weren't just you know fucking savages like the fucking Indians. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, for so observant. Let's keep moving. Ron Simmons defeats Ryan Wagner. And uh, then we got a Dusty promo. Uh, Dusty's got to set the record straight about what's going on inside of this envelope or envelope that Baby Doll's carrying around. Here it is. Oh, it's the American Dream, Dusty Road. Well, David, today I got a few things to address, and so I want everybody to be listening. First of all, I'm going to address the fact of Larry Zabisco and Baby Doll and tell the, the world out there throughout this country that Dusty Rose has never, ever done anything wrong to tarnish the name of the American dream. If you have documents, if you have photos, if you have clues and evidence, if you will, to say that Dusty Rose, the American dream, has ever stepped over the bounds, if you will, then baby doll prove it. And last the best if you want the United States Navy title, you have to come get it. Secondly now, the Road Warriors, my brother Animal, come out here and talk in a different tone and got right down in your living room and told you what's going to happen to the powers of pain. So powers of pain, you better take that to the bank because when Animal said and Hawk said, then it's a true fact. And then Ric Flair come out here knocking my public. He come out here and he be talking about the way people look, the way they are, and, he, and he's over here and he said, well, Ric Flair, you know what? I'm not a normal looking athlete myself. You know what I'm talking about? I've been in the dens of line. It's a privilege and an honor to walk out with Ole Anderson, Lex Luger, in the army tomorrow night. Because I'm not a put inside either. You know what I'm talking about? When you knock them, you're knocking me. And let me tell you something, Daddy. I can buy and sell you, Ric Flair. And that's the bottom line. And the other bottom line is, in this wrestling world, I am three times world heavyweight wrestling champion. That's the bottom line. And the other bottom line is, I am the current bull of the woods, if you will. And that makes me the baddest of them all. So, J.J. Dillon, you say you're going to listen to Ole Anderson, Lex Luger, and Dusty Rhodes, and look at us close, because you don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Total destruction is going to happen tomorrow night in the Omni. And anybody that don't believe that, they better be coming like it is going to be for the week of heart. The week of heart, if you will. So now I want to say something to my sister in Houston, Texas. Because Ric Flair, my sister, is 6'2 and weighs 280 pounds. And if you're speaking of fat women, you talk about my sister. And she'll come out here and clean your clock. You know what I'm talking about? And turn around and say, man, that was awful good, but it wasn't long enough. You know what I'm talking about? Jesus Christ. To be a man, you got to beat the man. Dusty Rose is the man. He is the tall power. He is too sweet to be sour. He is the rap master. There is no other. There is no equal. The man that built the Omni is Dusty Rose. Only Anderson. Lex Luger. Tomorrow night, let's get funky like a monkey, baby. There's no more to say. We'll be back right after this. All right, Hopper, what you got? Uh, well, it, 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 it was great, huh? <laughs> Talking about his fat sister. Come mm. on. Yeah, that was good. That's why I was laughing. Yeah, I guess because f- f- fucking uh, Rick came out and fucking hit a home run. So he's like, fuck, I guess I got to fucking come out here and, you know, take the filter off and, and, and go balls to the fucking wall. Yeah, I got to turn it up a notch, right? Right. And that was like the, that was to me the, the kind of dusty promo you saw maybe five, 
five or so years ago where he just fucking just you know he just fucking let it go 85 and 86 he was pretty good like that yeah doc what do you have yeah you didn't like it it's dusty needs to grab the pencil and go about go off or there are you muting yourself no, the the audio is just terrible tonight. I'm having a hard time hearing everything that's going on, but you know, I'm a concert pro- professional. Okay. So just there so you go. know, it's on your end. That's Reggie Roby, the Miami Dolphins punter. I remember him. Man, that was some he, he used yeah. to wear that watch when he punted. Yeah. He stuck out, huh? He was what? a great punter Why? though. Yeah. Why did he, he stick out hard? Yeah, he's he trying I'm, to be funny. Being, no, I mean, I I'm not trying to be I mean to this day, they don't have fucking black punters. That's and nice. Fucking, I'm just, I, I, am I lying? 30 years later? <laughs> you ain't got to get all hot. Name, name one black punter. You ain't got to get all there hot. Is and one. Up in the chest There's about one. There's one. Who? What's his name? Um, exactly. Well, I don't know all the punters in the league like I would have when I was seven. Marquette <laughs> King. There you go, him. He, yeah, he punted for the Raiders. Next Harper's, next next Harper's gonna tell me that they don't have black quarterbacks because they're not smart or something. They watch. Well, not any, that, that. not any that win with any regularity, See, you but go. you can have Racist. one. But you can have one. Yeah, racist you know, bastards. Get to the playoffs about uh, two, three years in a row, and then he then then he's on fucking ESPN. Yeah, it's you nice. get out there running around and then it's cold and you know you can't run around in the cold like that so the cold is a great neutralizer in playoff football isn't it mike no your team your team deals with that more than any other so there Uh, you go i I think that's a stereotype that that so much is i i try to tell him that all the time the whole weather thing it's like they're both cold both teams hate it so it's it doesn't Harper, matter. You won't convince him. He's convinced himself that it matters. And like I tell him all the time, these players aren't born in the city that they play right. in. They're from everywhere. The freaking New Orleans Saints have more Ohio State players on their team that are from Ohio where it fucking snows than anywhere. And he'll sit there and say, oh, bro, it matters. It matters. And he, you know what the example he used? Bro, I went to this thing in Dallas where they have these ice sculptures, and it was like five degrees in there, and bro, I was freezing. You're also not a professional athlete getting paid a lot of money to do it for a living, because that makes a big difference. But he don't want to hear that, because all he thinks is, no, bro, that cold affects you. All right, whatever. I don't even argue with him, Harper, but I see. I'm, I'm with you. We eye to eye, as the varsity club just defeated Trent Knight and Gary Phelps. Are we ready to move on now? He's he's not gonna say nothing. He's gonna act like he's gonna act like he didn't hear me because the audio's breaking up. But Hopper heard everything I said, right, Hopper? Yes. See, there you go. Uh, Kevin Sullivan and the Varsity Club have come out, and I just want to say in their promo, um, these three are something else. They are sick. They're twisted. This is great. It, it really is. Um, here it is. I'm trying to get to it. All right, with us the Varsity Club, Kevin Sullivan. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Garvin, how can you say you're going to put in the past what you and I have done? You look good at You know, I wanted you to be a member of the Varsity Club, David Crockett, Jimmy Garvin, because when I went to the River of the Dead and I got on the boat and went up and chewed upon the beetle nut, and met with Og, the keeper of the key. And I sat down the hall of memories. I saw all the good times I had with Jimmy Gavin. From Bangkok to Bally Valley, we feasted and rejoiced. And now that a poison came into your life, Jimmy, are you trying to say you're saying no, no. to me? What? Are no. you saying no? To the Varsity Club, Jimmy Garvin, this, what Michael Rotunda has. I said yes. 
He said yes. You see, this is the second most prestigious belt in the world. It is the world TV yes. title. You see, He's doing the best. even Dusty Rhodes, the U.S. champion. First of all, Games Master. Quiet, quiet dog face. Let Bennett talk. First of all, Games Master, what you ever saw in Garvin, I don't know. First thing we do is give him a shave and a haircut and take him down to Louisiana where they get real nasty. You know what I'm talking what? about? And then mm -hmm. we'd even see if he could pass the initiation, dog face. Oh. <laughs> now, what I saw in Jimmy Garvin was this. Dusty Rhodes is the U.S. champion, and even he now hungers for the world TV championship. Jimmy Garvin, I'm giving you one more chance. Don't let that poison talk to you anymore. All you have to do is say yes to me one time. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, the world tag team. Harbor, you, you said it before I played it. This was great. What did you have? Yeah. It, I just can't believe that's the same Mike Rotunda that was talking about Dory Funk in for, uh, Florida Championship Wrestling. It's just a, a whole different guy. And when they're in the back doing their shit, fucking acting like two two kids, it's, it, it's like they're in the back seat of the fucking family station wagon and <laughs> I'm waiting for him to turn around and go, sit the fuck down. <laughs> They were great, man. They're like two bad kids, and he's mm -hmm. shut up. Two little fucking asshole fucking kids. And they're all excited because they're going to go see, you know, whatever the big movie is, fucking Indiana Jones or fucking Star Wars, or they're going to the arcade or something. And, and he's going to turn around and tell them, sit the fuck down, or, or we're going home. Mike Rotunda went from a gimmick going nowhere to gold in the varsity club in mm -hmm. uh doc i know you're having trouble with the audio uh what do you have from it man i never know what kevin sullivan is saying but i like it gaffin jimmy gaffin what do you think they do to monkeys in malaysia jimmy gaffin i love kevin sullivan all right Let's keep going. We got Arn and Tully. They defeat Tony Suber and Barry Colley. I don't have anything from that. I'm going to assume that Harper, you don't have anything either. Nah. All right. Doc, anything? Mm -mm. Let's go to Tully, Arn, and JJ after the match. Cut a promo. Here it is. Team champions, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson with their manager, JJ Dillon. Very simple. The referee goes one, then he goes two, then he goes three, and it's another victory for the four horsemen. Just that simple. You know, J.J., everybody wants to come out here and start talking about money, that's the roads I can buy, sell, this, that, and the other. Well, I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to an auction at the Omni Sunday night. You don't got to come in with a checkbook and buy people. All that you've got to do is get in a squared circle and whoop them. What you saw is a double guard buster, 340 pounds, some guy named Kylie trying to make a name for himself, and Dusty Rhodes, if I read the program right, 280 pounds. My friend, you can get picked up just like this, and he can grab you by the neck and drop you on your face, as well as Ollie and Luger. And my friend, that's all that's got to be said about tomorrow night. David Crockett, this is a generic show. We can't come out here and talk about one night because the NWA, Jim Crockett Promotions, goes all across this world. But I'm going to take a little chunk of time and talk about the Omni. Because three men have put the, what they considered pooled their talents together. I'm talking about Rhodes, Luger, and Ole Anderson. And they decided we're going to jam the Omni. And in front of 20,000 people, we're going to take these two punk kids and flair and shut them up. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring Magnum TA down there for inspiration. Well, Magnum, when we were child children, we did childish things. When we became men, we put childish things away. Your day has come and gone. Maybe it'll come back to you. And God, I hope so. Because I want to be staring across to you in that ring when your time comes. But Magnum, your time is not now, my friend. You come down for inspiration. All well and good, but you get in my way. Get in his way, JJ's way. You get in Flair's way. I'll take you just to exactly what you are. And on our man and slap you flat of your back. 
Because I'm not above it. I've been on you right in that same Omni dressing room two short years ago. So if the people want to come down this time, since they weren't satisfied last time, and they want to be satisfied, you keep in mind one thing, people. You're in this business for the gore, and we're in it for the money. And nobody makes any money in this business unless they got one of these. And if you want to be a champion, you don't worry about public opinion. And if the public says, keep your hands off Magnum, and we are 20,000 strong, gonna come down there and make sure of it. Well then fine, you get in their corner, cause my friend, we take public opinion and put it exactly where it belongs. We put it in the sewer system, cause we're the horsemen, we earned everything we got, and by God, I dare any man to take what we've got. Right there you are. All right, the horsemen, the world tag team champions. Listen, coming up. That last line when he said, I dare any man to try to take what we got is what made that whole thing. Harper, what do you have? Man, Arn Anderson should have been a football coach. <laughs> man, that's yeah, fucking you ain't great. Kidding. To like oh. give the speech going into the yes. game yeah. or and at halftime. Yeah, in the locker room, the fucking pregame. Dude, he would have been perfect. Fuck public opinion. They could have 20,000 strong. Fuck those people. <laughs> right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it got rolling when Arn got going. That's for damn sure. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, man. Uh, what else you got, Harper? I just, it, it was fucking great. It yeah, was great. Man. That's all I can, that's all I, I can say. So I need you it to was... steal that for a lot for X rated and uh, give Matt that kind of pep talk. You know what I want to steal? What? It's fucking baby doll, bro. Oh, look out, look, <laughs> bro, look at her wearing the blue jeans, bro. Damn. She's 200 get, plus, easy. Bro, I go beyond the call of duty for that booty. Look at I that. I bet you would. <laughs> Doc, do you have anything from Arn? Man, Arn was great. He said he would put aside childish things and stuff. And then it's like just, man, I pray to God. That, man, it's just that whole, we'll slap Magnum because that's messed up. Well, it's, it's a great. Yeah. He don't care. Cripple or whatever. All right. We'll take you out. All right. So then uh, if you're watching on our Patreon video at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT, uh, you can sign up there and get the video version of these as we kind of share screens and walk through them and watch them. Larry Zabisco is out there. He's going to defeat Matt MacGyver. And Zabisco oh, is still the Western States Heritage Champion. Uh He's one of the only two that ever held that belt. But anyway, so Matt after MacGyver. that. Yeah. You didn't I mean, like what's him? the other guy going to be, uh, you know, crocking tubs? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, Hopper. Come on, man. You're so rude. All right. Uh, let's go to the final promo. We got Zabisco and Baby Doll, and this is how they go off here. Here he is, Larry Zabisco and Baby Doll. You know what? It's been a real interesting week in the news. And I hope you've been watching, Rose. I want you to think, why did Jimmy Swagger step down? Aside from them having the pictures, why did he step down? If you're on television with millions and hundreds of millions of kids watching you, American Dream, you have to be the example. You can preach how great you are, but when you have the evidence, when you have the pictures, you either lead and deceive, just like the American dream is now, injustice, lawlessness, pollution, corruption, immorality, you are the American dream, Rhodes! So are you going to step down? You going to be a man and admit it like Swagger had the guts to? Or are you going to be some kind of a cockroach? And you're going to keep lying and deceiving? Huh? Now, I'm not the type of man that is going to come out here and tell all the kiddies there's no Santa Claus. I'm not going to come out here and tell them there's no Easter Bunny. But I am going to come out and tell them that Dusty Rhodes the bull of the woods the man who has not stepped the bounds you hick is a liar and you're a coward if you did it at least admit it you're putting me in the position of flaunting the evidence me in the position 
of disgracing what these kids believe in. Let me tell you something, Rose. You're going to face the consequences. So Larry is going off right there about what's in the envelope and basically insinuating that uh, Dusty screwed somebody he wasn't supposed to. Uh, Doc, you got any thoughts on the closing promo there? I thought Larry was real good there. I thought he was healing out. You are the American dream. He, he was exceptional right there. Hopper, what do you have from it? Yeah, he was He was good there. I'm really not going to tell him there's no fucking Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. Wow, that's great. He basically, you... yeah. Yeah. He insinuated that uh, Dusty's up to no good. He's not what everybody thinks he is, and I don't know if you could do it any better. But what else you had, Hopper? I, I, the only thing is you can tell that that envelope is empty <laughs> when she holds it up. And it, they should have had a, like a, what do you call it, like a, a manila envelope, the big orange ones. Or a security just, one where you can't see. Right, them. exactly. Or, or get a big one like that and you put some like promo pics in it so it's like stiff so you know something's in there and that's where you stamp confidential on it so it looks like you're holding up real pictures but you didn't think that when you were 11 no fuck no <laughs> all right uh let's throw it to doc doc i know you have an audio issues what are you going to rate it and who are you giving a rolex to we're into february right this is this is the end of february so you know, I, I got to think that pitchers and catchers are about to report. So we do need some Braves baseball to give us some relief here. But this was a good episode. And it wasn't like there was anything that was just stand out the best thing we've ever seen. But I thought it was really solid from top to bottom. And everything was really good. And I'll give it an A-. minus. Okay. Who's getting a roll out? I'll look. I love wrestling, though, you know, so there you go. Um, this may surprise everybody, but I'm going to give it to Tim Horner for getting his trachea crushed. Jesus <laughs> That's <Christ>. nice. <laughs> Real classy, Doc. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. I feel like I should give it to Paul Lee so that he could sell it and get some reconstructive surgery to his face. Jesus Christ, you ain't kidding Hopper, who, what do you, what kind of rating are you gonna give it? I'm gonna give it uh, an A. And I mean, Rolex. Could, yeah, uh, I guess I give it to Arn. It's hard, man, because fucking Rick was batting a thousand. Yeah. And fucking, and fucking Dusty showed up, and and he didn't just phone it in. He fucking, you know, he turned it up a notch. Then you had to. That good tag team match. I'm going to throw I'm gonna throw a monkey wrench in there, too. The varsity club. Still had, right. You had them, and then you had Cornette and, and the fucking Midnight with this shit. So. Don't forget about Stan not saying a word. Right. <laughs> Picking out the broads he wanted to bang after. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so you giving it an A, and did you decide on Arn for the Rolex? Yeah. I guess I go with, with Arn. I got to give it to Arn, too. I was tempted to give it to the Varsity Club for just being three complete filthy animals out there acting like complete jackasses. But I'm going to give it to Arn, and I got to say, I'll probably give this episode an A, too. I think it was a, I think it was just that damn good. Uh, really solid. Everybody had solid promos. You know, you can't forget about that match with the Sheep Herders and Fantastics. It, they, they, they got out there, and they just got after it in that 12-minute match. So... Really, really good stuff overall. And before we get out of here, uh, something else that you could do for us that would be good overall is use that Amazon referral link. It's tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. It's a great way to support the show on an ongoing basis. Also, if you are not an Amazon Prime member, use the link tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon as well if you are planning on signing up for Prime because the show does get a little bit in return when you do that as well. So again, if you're not a Prime member and you're considering signing up for Prime because you get all kind of benefits from with Prime, like whether it's two free day, if, whether it's free two day delivery or just all kind of streaming stuff that is on amazon.com, you get all that with Prime. So again, it's tinyurl.com slash btt amazon give that link to the wives girlfriends hoes and side pieces in your life and tell them to use it every time they shop on amazon also remember 
Use our or become a patron at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT and get access to over 200 plus Patreon exclusive episodes on Patreon.com. So again, it's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Um, Harper, X rated was great. It was last week. We're recording this before it though, but it was a great time, wasn't it? You see? Um, we can't break the news. Cole Cabana's not going to be there, but there is a big surprise, and we will leave yes. it at that. Uh, maybe we'll talk about the surprise next week. All right. <laughs> Even though it'll be two weeks after. Big surprise coming to Wildcat based on um, something that I saw on the Wildcat page. I have no clue what it is, but we shall see since Colt can't make it. Uh, other than that, I want to mention a couple of shows that I'd like for you to check out. The Wrestling Podcast about nothing with ROH's Brian Malonis and Mike Crockett. Every single Monday they drop their episodes. Just search the WPAN or wrestling podcast about nothing. And actually I filled in for Mike Crockett last week on that show. Me and Malonis did an episode on tag teams and we talked tag team wrestling in general, classic stuff, current stuff as well. Also check out our vantage point, the retro wrestling podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, the Northern version of BTT slightly classier and a little bit more professional than us. Still fun. Nonetheless, so check them out. All of those shows support us. So please support them. Doc, you got anything before we get out of here with your sound issues? <laughs> Oh, I'm real. I'm real tuckered. It's the end of the show, so I think I've given everything I can give. Yeah, we started rather late tonight, and uh, it is late for for Doc and I. Not Hopper. Hopper's just getting his night started. Yeah. But, uh, when you're married with kids, we started real late tonight. Let's just leave it at that. So, all right, everybody, we're gonna get out of here. Hopefully, you enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you for all your support. Thanks for listening. Go check out our Twitter at BTC underscore podcast. Follow me on Twitter as well, Mike five hundred four Saints. Follow Hopper CJH who that. Go to the Facebook group. Uh, I think it's tinyurl.com slash BTTFB group. Or just search Book in the Territory. The yeah, just search Book podcast. in the Territory. Don't just tell them the fuck. I think you'd find it. It's like you're about to cut the Vimeo. Bruh, oh, it's yeah. just, just go to the search to type in Book in the fucking Territory. It's not fuck. that hard. It's it not that, that hard. It ain't that fucking hard, guys. <laughs> we ain't building a rocket. Okay. Hopper, Doc's tuck it out. I'm trying to tuck it out too. Uh, hit the tagline. Let's get out of here. Fuck it, bitch. out of here i want to give a shout out to all of our great patrons out there thank you for your support your support really does mean a lot to what the three of us do uh i should say four with lance uh every single week on this show uh with the world class shows smoky mountain shows nwa shows and our new show the ecw bottom line cast at the five dollar tier as well but we appreciate your support and your patronage so if you're a patron thank you so much and if you're not a patron become one at tinyurl.com slash patreon btt and support us and um also uh if you're a patron or not use the amazon referral link at tinyurl.com slash btt amazon bookmark that and please give that link to your family members and everyone that you know and tell them to use it because it is a great way to support what we do i want to also thank the 
Hall of Fame patrons out there. So Rocky Swayzo, who was a longtime Patreon or longtime listener, and now uh, jumped up and he is a BTT Hall of Fame listener. Thank you, Rocky. I know you're out there. You've been listening for a long time, man. Thanks for bumping up. And um, well, thanks for, for becoming a uh, Hall of Fame Patreon member. We appreciate it. Christopher Champer, Will Hartke, Robbie Dyson, Rick Beebe, Brad Dunifen, Tom Schlegel, Coach Joey Chase, a.k.a. Willie Chase, Steve Malbasa, LaRon Brown, Kenny Byersdorf, Glenn Abbott at G.A. Russell Nutt, Bobby Murray, Marlon Mueller, a.k.a. Half Pints Point, Josh Warren, Everett Starr, Mike Childry, Kyle Riley, Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Craig Norman, Johnny on Patreon, The Great John Dean, at YRC21 on Twitter, Josh Dunn at Ryan and Auburn, Good Old Justin, Robert Smith, Joseph I. Tim Moretti, Adam Price, Brian Evans, Mark Wilson, Armando Martinez, David Jordan, Jesse Jacobs, Josh Fields, Chris Myers, Gerald Green, Mitchell Johnson, Mike Pru, Will Parker, Jeremy Bryant, Classy Alex, Slider 91 US, David DeVries, Frog Zeppelin, SV Pagem, Bill Salsa, Big Rich, at Spy Boy Sports Cap, R.E. Miller 39, J. Shiny 21, Ruben Espinosa, Merciless Jones, Jesse Lucas, Chris Browning, Justin underscore Andretti, Cole Mini, Tutu, Marty Howell, T-Hog94, and at Godbold Unreal on Twitter. Thank you for being Hall of Fame patrons. Definitely appreciate that. Your patronage is of great help. And remember, if you have hit your either seventh month at that patron level or one year, a two year anniversary, etc. at that patron level, please let me know because I owe you a shirt. If I haven't already got you your shirt or your Pro Wrestling Tees gift card, let me know and I will get it sent out. Um, also, check out the Bottom Line cast with Mike Pru and Mike does the ECW live cast as well, the extreme live cast on the Patreon feed. But check out his Bottom Line cast with JV. It's a podcast series where they break down the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin month by month on a weekly basis. New episodes come out every single Monday morning, available wherever you get your podcast from, like iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, Google Play, etc. And also follow Mike and JV at Bottom Line Cast on Twitter. Uh, that is the show's official Twitter feed. But again, also I said they are doing the ECW Livecast 2, the Extreme Livecast. It's a watch along series. Every two weeks, they do two episodes on our $5 tier. So that's a, another great benefit to being a $5 patreon member is you're going to get the ecw shows now too that's all i have thank you everyone for being patrons we appreciate it hall of fame patrons we appreciate it thank you for all of your support have a great day and until next week on the smoky mountain show or the nwa show book it bitch